Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today, there was a really interesting statistics post that came out from GGG. Uh, this is the Ultimatum Statistics blog uh, that was put up on the Path of Exile website. It's got some interesting things in it. I want to quickly go through it and give a bit of a sense as to uh, what it, I think it says about the League uh, and also about questions like the Trial Master and how rare it is and things like that. So firstly, um, the statistics cover a bunch of information about all of the players, but this is only PC players. So this does not include people that are playing on PlayStation or Xbox, uh, but will just be about the PC realms. It splits up the data into three brackets. So there's what I term low level. This is everything up to and including tier five maps. And it's noticeable that the overwhelming majority of ultimatum encounters that have been begun have actually been in these low tier encounters. Uh, so this is uh, tier, uh, monster level two, so the coast, all the way up to 72, which is tier five maps. Then we have 73 to 77, which is very small numbers of people running ultimatums. And then 78 plus where there's a lot more. I think that sort of is uh, illustrative of the way that the game is at the moment, that players spend very little time in yellow maps. You're always trying to leapfrog over your yellow maps as quickly as possible and get into the red maps. I kind of think that's a bit of a problem with the state of the game, uh, but that's a totally different topic. Uh, I think that yellow maps should be something like there should uh, people shouldn't feel any shame for choosing to stick in yellow maps for a longer period of time, uh, and that that should be something that players might actually sometimes want to do. But anyways, uh, it's not the case at the moment. Really interesting thing is that there's two bits of uh, statistics here. The first one is a breakdown of what your probability is of completing an ultimatum if you begin it. So what this means is that let's say that you've done three waves, you're three waves deep in the uh, in an ultimatum encounter, and then you elect to start the fourth one. Uh, according to these statistics, if you're in a high tier map, you are 97.38% to succeed. So that doesn't mean that you personally are 97.38% to succeed and 2.68%, oh sorry, 2.62% to either die, disconnect, or leave the ultimatum arena, or cop your seventh stack of ruin, or see the altar destroyed, or something like that. What this means is that across all of the Wave 4 encounters that have been started by any player in a level 78 plus zone, so a red tier map, uh, there has been 2.62% failure rate. And this failure rate predictably increases as we go on. Now I've done the math so that you don't have to, and it turns out that uh, if players always continue on with an ultimatum, they are 26.7% to fail before Wave 9. Oh, sorry, before completing Wave 9. And so before finding out whether or not there'd be a Trial Master in the, in the zone that they're in. Then once they actually do begin the Trial Master fight, they're 60% to succeed, 40% to fail. That's the statistics across the whole league so far. Obviously, you'll find that a lot of the victories will be concentrated amongst players that are mapping really fast and really powerful characters. And also a lot of the defeats will tend to lead to players choosing to skip a few ultimatums for a little bit, decide, ah, oh, I've been beaten by that, I'm not going to go back to it for a little while. Uh, but what really interested me was the was the relative numbers of encounters started. I think there are a large number of players who are choosing not to begin ultimatums uh, because they're running a higher tier map where they know, because the ultimatums are so much harder than the rest of the map, these players know that they can beat the map as it stands. So, you know, you enter up, you, you zone into a tier 15 map. You're very confident that you can beat the map boss. But you know that if you start the ultimatum encounter, there's a pretty good chance you're going to fail it. And a lot of players have not succeeded in ultimatums, or have, you know, learned that uh, I'm not really up to the ultimatums, uh, I'm going to give them a miss. The other thing that's apparent is that amongst those players, you've really got two options. You can either stay running your high tier maps and mostly skip the ultimatums, or you can drop down a few tiers uh, and do the ultimatums in the lower tier maps. And it turns out that very few players are actually doing that latter option. So players are preferring to stay in the higher tier maps, uh, skipping the ultimatums, then to drop back to lower tier maps where they can beat the ultimatum as well. I don't know if that's the right strategic call for all players, uh, but that's what people are actually doing. So uh, the other things that are interesting is looking at the completion rate by encounter type. Uh, and it's apparent that the stone circles encounters are much harder than the others. Uh, additionally, uh, the defend the altar ones are being beaten far more often than anything else. 
And what's going on here is that players are, uh, well, with the altar, essentially you have a massive decoy totem in the center of the arena. Uh, this decoy totem is causing most of the monsters, not all of them, to attack the totem instead of you. This then lets you uh, be the first person to land a hit on those monsters, which makes those encounters quite a bit easier. Uh, the survive and defeat monsters ones are in the middle, and the stone circles ones, which require you to stand your ground, are much harder. In particular, Stone Circles plays really nasty with a number of the ultimatum mods. Uh, Stone Circles, for instance, and Choking Miasma is scary. Stone Circles and Stalking Ruin is terrifying. Uh, and so these combinations of mods mean that the these encounters are much more frequently failed than the other ones. So yes, uh, Stone Circle encounters are harder and they're much more frequently failed than anything else. I think most people that have uh, that have run more than 20 ultimatums have figured that out. The last thing that's interesting is looking at the failure rate based upon the particular mods that are present. And it's really interesting looking to see which ones players are having trouble with. So firstly, we have Ailment and Curse Reflection. This is really mean at the low levels. Uh, so you see that it's uh, killing a lot of low-level players in, in zones uh, from level 72 and down. Uh, and I think that's because players are getting frozen and they don't have any freeze resistance and they're just freezing, they're, they're suffering a reflected freeze and then just dying. Uh, whereas at higher level, players are aware of this interaction and either choose something else instead of Ailment and Curse Reflection if they're going to die to their own, to their own bile or alternately they just go, okay, I'm going to make certain that I keep up a warding, oh, sorry, a um, antifreeze flask all the time. Blistering Cold 3 causes a few failures, but not a huge number. Bonus Chaos Damage causes quite a lot, especially in middle tiers. Uh, and I think what's happening here is that players are selecting bonus Chaos Damage and underestimating it in lower tier maps. Uh, but when they get to higher tier maps, players have built in a bit more Chaos Resistance because that's something you need to do on players on characters nowadays. Buffs Expire Faster is a scary mod. Uh, it's very easy to underestimate that mod. It's one of the nastier ones. Choking Miasma is not a totally free mod, but close to it. Uh, and so it's got low failure rates. Uh, escalating damage taken is one of the very highest failure rates. It's the second highest in the whole lot, I think. Uh, I'm just going to confirm that. 20.17, so uh, it's... No, it's, I, I correct myself, it is the number three. And the reason that this one is so dangerous is that it is just so subtle. What's so scary about 1% increased damage? Oh, wait, now it's no longer just 1%. Now it's 27% increased damage. Uh, and that scales up a lot of things that monsters do. Uh, essentially, it is really, really, really dangerous. Escalating monster speed, surprisingly, is less dangerous than that. Um, <laughs> hindering flasks is killing low-level players, but not high-level ones, because high-level players are aware of it and maybe have a jewel that prevents, uh, that prevents being hindered. Less cooldown recovery is a monster. Uh, I've certainly learned, do not take this mod. Do not take this mod. This mod gets you killed. Uh, it seems so harmless, but it has such a massive detrimental effect on your character's performance that it is a killer. A uh, couple other ones. Lightning damage to, from mana cost is interesting in that everyone that's playing an Archmage build makes this mistake once and dies, uh, but after that they never take it again. Uh, for other builds, it's not that bad. So that's why it's not causing a massive chance of failure. Uh, Limited Arena, I'm quite surprised, is a low chance of failure. That, I find, is one of the hardest ones to deal with. The one that has the biggest effect, and this is interesting because it's not that scary at lower tiers, uh, but higher tiers it is. It's the most scary of all of them, is Limited Flasks. So this is the one that when you activate a flask, it cancels all of your other flasks' effects that are active. Uh, at high level play, flasks are so overwhelmingly powerful uh, that this Limited Flasks mod is a massive debuff to your character's power. Uh, I think that this is actually a really interesting thing to see. Flasks have just gotten better and better and better and better and better and better as Path of Exile has gotten older, uh, and the Limited Flasks mod really proves that. Uh, occasional Impotence is the thing that prevents you from dealing damage for two seconds out of every eight. This is terrifying because for two seconds you're essentially helpless, you're unable to retaliate, and two seconds is a long time in Path of Exile. Raging Dead 1 and 2 are free. Raging Dead 3 is scary. I think anyone that's played with this mod knows that. Um, Random Projectiles is nasty, but actually, 
lower failure chance than I was expecting. Razor Dance isn't doing very much, uh, as again, players probably expect. Uh, the thing that's really interesting down here though, Siphon Charges is pretty nasty. Uh, this is the mod that causes you to lose all your charges really quickly and monsters to gain them. Uh, and this one is getting players killed a lot. Uh, again, like the limited flasks, but to a lesser extent, players are often very dependent upon their power, endurance, and frenzy charges, their major source of defense, and being able to regenerate them quickly uh, isn't something that's in most builds. Most builds can generate them, but not in, not like that, and so it takes a little while. So that one is uh, getting a few players killed. The real surprise one, though, for a lot of players, though, is probably going to be Stormcaller Runes 3. This does so much damage. I learned early on, do not take this mod. Do not, like, Tiers 1 and 2 are free. Tier 3 is terrifying. The reason that Stormcaller Runes 3 is so scary is that you take a single massive lightning damage hit, which then stuns you and shocks you. Once you're stunned and shocked, you're dead. Uh, in Path of Exile. When you're surrounded by monsters, stunned and shocked, uh, you are dead. And this means that essentially Stormcaller Runes is like having Atsuri present in the fight. Uh, Atsuri is not that hard to dodge her abilities if she's the only thing happening. But when you've got an arena full of monsters trying to kill you, you might have an altar to protect, you might have um, monsters to kill, whatever. Uh, you might have circles to stand in. Having Atsuri casting her empowered Stormcalls everywhere is really scary. And Stormcaller Runes 3 essentially puts Atsuri's storm, uh, empowered Stormcalls into the arena. Uh, so yeah, this is really deadly and is something that players should just do it once for the purposes of getting your uh, for the purposes of getting your challenge and then never take that one again. As for the rest of them, the totems are fairly dangerous. Uh, Treacherous Auras is less dangerous than I expected. I thought Treacherous Auras would be one that people don't take very often and when they do they fail it a lot. And Unlucky, Unlucky Criticals is quite a rare mod. I uh, actually still need this for my challenge to do all of the different uh, all the different challenges. Overall, I'm, I'm quite surprised at the, um, you know, that it's only really limited flasks and Stormcaller Runes 3 and the uh, Escalating Damage taken that are absolute destroyers of players. Uh, those are killing a lot of people. I thought Ailment and Curse Reflection and Treacherous Auras would be much higher up on the list than they are, uh, because those are really sketchy mods as well. Now there's a really interesting thing, which is the question of Trial Master Encounters. Uh, and so what the game does, when you load into a zone, uh, it decides all 10 ultimatum rewards. Now you won't necessarily get 10, uh, in fact 98% of the time you'll get 9 or fewer, but it decides whether or not the Trial Master is present at the time you zone into the map. And of the zones where a player has zoned in and a Trial Master has been spawned, in 64.39% of the time, the player doesn't encounter the Trial Master. There's two reasons for this. The first one is that the player may, in, may fail an ultimatum encounter. The second one is that they may chicken out. Or also, for that matter, the third one is that they may not start the ultimatum at all. And ultimately, that is happening 64% of the time. The other 36% of the time, the player is getting to fight the Trial Master. What this means is that if you actually stand your ground and always decide, I am going to stick with this ultimatum no matter what, you'll get the Trial Master in 2% of Tier 14, 15, and 16 maps. But uh, if you see a good piece of loot and say, you know what, I'm not sticking for the rest of this, I'm just going to take that and run, uh, if you sometimes die, if you sometimes hit 7 Ruin and fail or leave the altar or whatever and fail, uh, then you're contributing to this 64.39% chance. And ultimately, this is the reason that people are reporting that the Trial Master feels rare. Uh, I, the Trial Master itself is not that rare an encounter, uh, but with a combination of scary map mods, scary ultimatum mods and the like, it feels it because two thirds of them are not even being seen. And then once you do see them, 40% uh, of them are being failed because the fight's unfamiliar, the fight's not trivial. Uh, and as a result, you wind up in a situation where uh, where roughly, I think it's uh, every 250 maps or so uh, that a player enters, that player beats the Trial Master. That's on average across the league. But one in 50 maps, he was actually there. So that's an, that's an interesting one. Uh, inscribed ultimatums are interesting. It's roughly a 20% failure rate across all of the tiers. Uh, I do think that this is much higher for most players. 
I think that most players that attempt inscribed ultimatums are probably failing their first few, then finding a bit of a rhythm. Inscribed ultimatums are hard. Uh, they're very beatable, but they are hard, uh, and as a result, you'll find a lot of players will have a number of failures in them. Uh, the last things that they had were some really interesting information about the very, very, very best rewards. Uh, and there's something interesting that's sort of hidden here. So the thing that's revealed is that 173 times, and this is out of, uh, was it um, 197 million ultimatums, a Mirror of Calandra has been generated as a reward. So this means that when you enter a map, there is a slightly less than 1 in 1 million chance that that map is going to have a Mirror of Calandra as a reward from the Trial Master. Oh, sorry, well, yeah, I think they're always from Trial Master, but at least from the Ultimatum in some way, shape, or form. Uh, however, of that 173 that the game was prepared, like that the game had generated and was prepared to issue as loot, only 70 were actually issued as loot. That is a very small number. Uh, by comparison, I believe at Ritual at this uh, in Ritual League, at this time of the league, approximately 490 mirrors had been given out as rewards from the Ritual system. Uh, and so what this means ultimately is that the ultimatum encounters are killing a lot of players, and when they're killing a lot of players, those players are uh, missing out on big pieces of loot. Headhunter, though, the, the piece of information I think is a little bit hidden here is that Headhunter appears to be about two and a half times as common as a Mirror of Calandra. Now, there was some data mine information from a few years back. Uh, this is so old. This information is so old that Eternal Orbs were still in the game. So it gives you a bit of a sense. This is like 2014 or so. But back then, uh, it was data mined by just stripping the information out of the game files about drop tables that the Mirror of Calandra was 1,600 times as rare as an Exalted Orb. We don't know if that's still the case now, but uh, if that was, the, if that is still the case, and if the Headhunter is 200, sorry, is two and a half times as common as the Mirror of Calandra, it seems to be reasonably inferable from these stats. And then that would mean that for every 1,600 Exalted Orbs, there's about 2.5 uh, Headhunters that drop. And that should give you a bit of a sense as to the rarity of headhunters nowadays uh, in the current league economy. That said, uh, in the Ritual League, I believe from the statistics that GGG provided then, the Mirror of Calandra and the Headhunter were about the same rarity as each other. Lastly, uh, one thing that isn't mentioned anyway here is that Mirrors of Calandra are in less demand than usual this league because there is a... Uh, inscribed ultimatum that is very, 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 very rare, but that it mimics the effect of a Mirror of Calandra. Uh, it's a much higher risk version because you need to actually win an inscribed ultimatum, otherwise you lose the original item as well as the copy. Uh, so very, very, very high risk. Uh, and these are rare, but they are a workable substitute for a Mirror of Calandra, and so that's been something that's uh, changed this league's economy a lot. It's meant that, uh, that the real thing, the real Mirror of Calandra, the original and the best, uh, is a bit cheaper than it otherwise would be. Anyways, uh, I really like these statistics when GGG provide them, and I sort of I'm looking forward to the next slot that they're bringing out. The next slot, we'll look at some of the Atlas passive statistics. So this will be how many people are still taking post-nerf Valdo's Rest Harbinger nodes? How many people are still taking post-nerf um, Lexajorus uh, maps have a 5% chance to drop Delirious, the pathological node? How many people are taking Inside Job in Heist, one of the nodes I think is one of the better ones? Uh, how many people are taking Votive Horde, all of the uh, Abyss shenanigans that you can carry out in New Vestia? And how many people are taking some of the really unpopular nodes as well? Uh, so that information will be coming soon. Don't have that yet. Anyways, um, I'm going to leave it there. If you've got any comments or questions, definitely fire away below. Uh, otherwise, I hope you have a good one, and I will see you around. May your Valobs have interesting results.